All right, welcome to part two of low carb frustrations. Again, we're talking about how do you overcome the most common things that can frustrate you, discourage you, and even completely sabotage you when you're trying to lose weight on a low carb diet. And we left off talking about the very frustrating experience of getting on one of these good, solid, low carb plans, falling it perfectly, but weeks go by, months go by, and you're not burning fat. You're not getting rewarded for doing the right things. And we talked about just a few of the chemicals that can interfere with fat burning hormones, but really anything that blocks you or sabotages you from burning fat on a low carb diet does it by interfering with your hormones or these glands that you see pictured here that make those hormones. So a great example of this is how too much stress can interfere with weight loss. When you're under stress, those adrenal glands that you see on the right produce cortisol. There's nothing wrong with cortisol. It's an essential hormone. But too much stress can lead to too much cortisol production, which can lead to too much belly fat storage. And unfortunately, there are a lot of different types of stress that can overstimulate the adrenal glands and lead to that overproduction of cortisol. So too much emotional stress can overstimulate cortisol. Too much physical stress over exercising. So ironically, you have a lot of people trying to lose weight that believe if I can just exercise longer and harder and more days during the week, then I'll be able to burn fat. But there's a lot of people with weak adrenal glands and they can't handle that heavy exercise and it's working against them. The more they overwork and overexercise, the harder it is to burn fat. And speaking of calories, people that are doing low calorie, low fat, basically close to starvation diets. If your body's not getting the nutrition it needs, especially if you're exercising heavily, a low calorie, low protein, low fat diet can really increase your stress hormones and ironically interfere with fat burning. And finally, if you're one of the millions of Americans that don't get good, consistent quality sleep, that is definitely going to add a lot of stress to your adrenal glands and sabotage your fat burning in a lot of ways. If you're not sleeping well, you're probably not going to handle stress properly, and you're going to be more likely to overproduce cortisol when you're under stress. Sleep deprivation can also really increase cravings for sugar and carbohydrates. And finally, several of your fat-burning hormones, like growth hormone, are most active when you're in deep restful sleep. So sleep deprivation and just poor quality sleep can really interfere with adrenal gland health and stress hormones. And vice versa, the more stressed your adrenals get, the worse your sleep tends to become. So this can be a really vicious cycle that sabotages fat burning. So you have to have healthy adrenal glands to really get rewarded on a low carb diet. Your body's got to be regulating stress properly. But you also have to have a healthy thyroid gland to burn fat. And as you see in this picture on the top left, the thyroid gland is regulated by the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus gland in your brain. That hypothalamus gland, you may have never heard of it before, but that's really like the boss of all your glands and hormones. So it has to be working properly to burn fat. And we talked in the last video about why it's so important to have a healthy liver so that you can deal with all the toxins in the environment that put stress on these endocrine glands and interfere with your fat burning hormones. So the bottom line, if you want to simplify this, is you've got to be healthy to burn fat. The healthier your endocrine glands are, healthier your liver is, the more success you're going to have when you go on a low-carb diet. So if you are getting no results on a low-carb diet, not just slow results, but you're not burning any fat at all, at some point you have to suspect that you have a health roadblock that's sabotaging your body's ability to burn fat. And these are some great ways to identify what that unique health roadblock is for you. So simple blood tests will often pick up a thyroid dysfunction that's keeping you from burning fat. Salivary hormone testing is great for identifying adrenal gland stress and sex hormone imbalances. So we mentioned in the last video, estrogen and testosterone imbalances can both really interfere with fat burning. Sometimes just understanding what your symptoms mean can give you really good important clues of what your health roadblocks are. So for example, with the hypothalamus gland, you can feel too cold, too hot, back and forth between feeling cold and hot because the hypothalamus gland is kind of like your body's thermostat. The hypothalamus also influences your appetite. So if you're never satisfied with meals, that can be a clue of a hypothalamus problem. The hypothalamus also influences your emotions. So if you struggle with depression, extreme mood swings, these are all clues that might point to a hypothalamus problem blocking you from being able to burn fat. And if you have a snoring problem and you never wake up feeling refreshed and rested, 
at some point, it's really going to be worth it to go get a complete sleep study. Because if you have sleep apnea and you're not getting restful sleep, it's going to be much harder to burn fat. On the flip side, if you're overweight, that's one of the biggest contributors to sleep apnea. So this is a vicious cycle that we've got to identify and overcome. So we're going to do a whole separate video about how to identify and how to overcome these common health roadblocks that keep you from burning fat. But in the meantime, I hope you're encouraged to know that you're not alone if you haven't been able to burn fat on a low-carb diet. And also, I hope you're encouraged to know that these problems really can be corrected. And if you're one of those people that have a roadblock keeping you from burning fat, the biggest temptation right now is going to be that feeling of, what's the point? What's the point of avoiding all this good-tasting, high-sugar, high-carbohydrate food if I'm not going to burn fat by avoiding it? Well, the biggest reason for keeping these foods at a minimum, even if you're not burning fat and even if you're not trying to lose weight, is the more of these concentrated carbohydrates and sugars you eat, the more insulin you have to produce from your pancreas just to process all this extra blood sugar. And we talked about how insulin is the hormone that promotes more belly fat storage. So you're just going to gain more weight on those foods. But that's really just the tip of the iceberg. When you live on a high carbohydrate, high sugar diet for years and years and years, eventually what happens is your cells become more desensitized, more resistant to the effects of all that extra insulin. So your pancreas has to keep pumping out more and more insulin just to get the blood sugar under control. This is a term you might have heard of called insulin resistance. And as you can see from this picture, insulin resistance has much more serious consequences besides just gaining weight. Insulin resistance is a major risk factor for developing heart disease. It does tremendous damage to your cardiovascular system. It increases triglycerides while at the same time lowering your good protective HDL cholesterol. It increases your blood pressure, increases your risk for blood clots, can damage your brain, digestive system, and reproductive organs. And these are just a few of the medical journals showing the strong link between insulin resistance and developing a lot of the chronic diseases that most people think are just a part of getting old. Diabetes. If you keep pushing your pancreas to make more and more insulin with more and more sugars and carbohydrates, eventually the pancreas just can't do it anymore. It burns out, and that's what becomes type 2 diabetes. And it's estimated that by the year 2020, half of all Americans will be diabetic or pre-diabetic because we literally are addicted to carbohydrates and sugar. And again, high blood pressure, heart disease, both of these have a huge link with insulin resistance. Your risk of having a stroke goes up with insulin resistance. Your risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Again, these are not just normal things that come with aging. There is such a strong link between blood sugar disorders and Alzheimer's disease that a lot of researchers are starting to refer to Alzheimer's as type 3 diabetes. And even your risk for cancer is going to be higher. This journal specifically studied the link between breast cancer and insulin resistance. Sleep apnea. This sleep journal found that sleep apnea symptoms are more severe if you have insulin resistance. And finally, joint pain and inflammation. Very few things can increase your pain and inflammation levels as much as an uncontrolled blood sugar problem and insulin resistance. So all of that is to say, it's very frustrating if you're not burning fat on a low-carb diet, but if that diet helps you go from a place of eating a lot of these foods every single day to maybe eating a small amount of these foods once or twice a week, it is well worth it for the health benefits. And if you just need a break from a low-carb diet because you're not burning fat on it, but you also want to stay healthy, you don't want to gain more weight, you want to stay out of all those problems of insulin resistance we talked about, these are the much healthier carbohydrates that won't wreck your health. And these aren't the best foods to eat a lot of when you're trying to burn fat because they still have a fair amount of carbohydrate. But these are definitely not the junk carbohydrates that lead to premature aging, degenerative diseases, all coming from insulin resistance. And yes, even a little piece of dark chocolate is much better than the bread, pasta, corn chips, potato chips, soda, and all those other powerful, overwhelming carbohydrates. So let's take a break, and we're going to pick up part three of this series talking about the very common frustration of cravings. Cravings for junk carbohydrates. What do you do when you want to get off these foods? You know you need to get off these foods, but you can't because you crave them so much. We'll see you in part three.